more population proportion. Sea Ferry, exploring the possibility of offering a ferry service between two coastal, coastal towns, provided there is sufficient demand. They interviewed 200 commuters from two towns and 130 of them indicate. Okay, so we have P, my population, my proportion here is 130 out of 200, which is 13 over 20, which is 0 0.65. So one minus P, 0.35. So handy to set these up the minute you see them inside the question. So estimate the proportion of commuters who would use the ferry service. Okay, so we've 1.96 multiplied by 0.65 times 0.35 divided by the size of the sample, which is 200. So 1.96 times 0.65 by 0.35 is going to be 0.067. I'll take 0.067. So I can say that my P, the higher end of it, I'm going to add 6 to 65. So I'm going to get 0.71 with the 7 at the end. And if I take it away, I take 6, so I'm going to 59, so 58, 3 at the other end. So I can say with 95% confidence that between 58.3% and 71.6% of people would use this ferry. And that's my confidence interval. A newspaper report, the government's approval rating is 61%. 0 0.61 equals P. 0.39 equals 1 minus p. The paper states that the poll is based on a random sample of 900 voters and the margin of error is 3.2. Show that the posters use a 95% level of confidence. Well, what can we say here? Based on our proportion, 1.96 by 0.61 by 0.39 divided by 900 is the sample. So that's going to give me this error to be 0 0.03, 0 0.03187. So I got one nine, so 3.19%. We're asked to show 3.2%. Well, we could round that off to 3.2%. 3.2%. So that's correct. And then in question eight, suppose a sociologist wants to determine the percentage of Irish households using email. Well, this is a bit outdated. It's pretty much in the 99s, I'd imagine, is it at this point? How many households must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is an error by no more than four percentage points? So in this case, Now you can see here, we're looking for N, and it doesn't give us anything about P. So this will bring in something that we will see actually in a later video, where the max value of P times one minus P, the max of this is when P is equal to a half. Yeah, but up at a half times a half, which is a quarter. So that's the max value of P times one minus p if you want to just check that check something either side of a half we could say well what's 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 0 0.4 by 0 0.6 they're both either side of a half 0 0.24 you can see this is 0 0.25 so it's something we will come back to later but it comes into this question so we want the margin of error here we want p whatever p is, this is going to be plus 0 0.2 and this is going to be minus 0 0.2 percent or I'll actually say 2% plus 2% minus 2% plus 2% and minus 2% which is 0 0.02, 0 0.02 so let's just fill in what we know into the formula, we know that 
by the square root of p times 1 minus p over n has to be equal to 0 0.02 so p times 1 minus p over n is equal to 0 0.02 over 1.96 to be squared if I get rid of the square root so I can say that p times 1 minus p over n is equal to small number 0 0.00 and this point it's probably best to leave these to the end 0 1 0 4 I'll take them all because it's so small 0 4 1 2 3 3 and as we said earlier the max value of P will be of P times 1 minus P will be 0 0.25 so to max out this expression they don't give us anything else here 0.25 over n is equal to this I'll just put it there for now and then if we change places to 0.25 divided by this big long expression will give me a value for n so n in this case is equal to Two four zero zero point nine nine two four zero zero point nine nine. So we'd say that n is equal to two four zero one.